This video is about the Whelan Piercer 2 strobe traffic clearing light for the center of the edge bar, and it comes with several warnings. The first is a strobe sensitivity warning, and the next is a do not mess with high voltage if you don't know what you're doing, and the next would be don't mess with a strobe power supply unless you're willing to ruin it. These are not technically field serviceable. But our project today is gonna to be taking a look at the Piercer 2 power supply and seeing how it gets its rate. And this is a timing chip board, which means it uses a timing chip, uh, two resistors, and a capacitor to uh, essentially keep time. And we can see here we have a 19K resistor on the right is the one that we'll be altering to change our flash rate. So there's a few ways we can go about altering that. But before we do that, let's look at exactly what sort of tickle we're dealing with if we uh, get our hands where they shouldn't be. We're looking at about 240 volts, uh, relatively low amperage DC. It would certainly be uncomfortable, I can confirm. And while it probably wouldn't kill you, it's certainly not something you should do. Uh, and you can see after the device is turned off here, we still contain a 185-ish volt charge in our capacitor, and that usually takes about five minutes to bleed off. The device is not on, and we still have 180, 85-ish volts remaining in the main capacitor. So this isn't something that you can just play around with. So we get our rate from these uh, timing chip style boards with two resistors and a capacitor around the timing chip. The one on the right is 19K, and that's the one we'll be altering, and we've taken it out and we've put two pins in so we can connect our test leads and we can start messing around with what speed we'd like to change this to. That could be as simple as just flopping in resistors to see what we like, but a more visual way to do this is to take a 10K resistor on the far end and then hook it up in series with a bunch of 1K resistors so that we have a... Uh, a line of them that we can connect in the middle of each one and get an approximate-ish uh, resistance that we can change uh, a little bit more visually than a uh, potentiometer would do so. So I'm going to poke around here uh, between the different 1K resistors um, and see what the different approximate resistance values uh, replacing that uh, 19K resistor gives us in flash rate. Um, and you can see, since we're starting at 10, 10 is pretty fast. Uh, it's kind of on the high end for warning. And then when we get all the way out to the end, which is uh, approaching somewhere like, I believe there's 28 or 30 of them here, I could be wrong. You're approaching more than the uh, factory spec, um, way more than the factory spec. It gets pretty slow. Um, so that's kind of just a visual representation of what different resistor values are going to give you what flash rate. And again, we could use a potentiometer to do this, and we will, because um, that's how Whelan would do it on their uh, boards that have an adjustable flash rate. Uh, but there's not a whole lot to see when you're just dialing a potentiometer. So I thought this was a more uh, visual way to kind of show where we're trying to dial this device in. Um, so here is a potentiometer, and you'll see hooked to the end of it is a uh, resistor. We'll get to that in a second. Um, we're going to play around with some resistor values here and just kind of see what some specific resistors that we know are either uh, too high or too low give us and how that corresponded to our chain of resistors and whether or not we're getting similar results, which... I haven't pulled up the resistor values here, but yes, we're getting pretty similar results. Um, so we can switch those in and out and kind of see what we get as far as speed, much like we did with the chain of resistors. And usually I wouldn't make a chain of resistors uh, to test something like this, but for visual purposes for the video, I went ahead and did it. So that, that's why it's in the video. When swapping these in, you can do trial and error knowing that you're starting uh, at the factory rate it would be a 19k resistor you could just start pulling like slightly lower and slightly higher values until you get what you would like uh, through trial and error you could use the digikey website's uh, 555 timing chip calculator tool where when you know the uh, value of your capacitor and your two resistors you can plug in different values and see 
essentially what sort of uh, waveform you get as far as high low um, what the cycle would be or you can do what I'm doing and kind of playing around with it um, ultimately throwing a potentiometer in there um, is going to be the most uh, the most sensitive way to adjust it and that's why Whelan used them on a lot of their boards they don't use them on this board because they're really just going for a max-ish speed and so they can just plug in a resistor that's close to that and since they haven't promised really a specific speed it doesn't really matter no adjustments needed when it leaves the factory um, when we use the potentiometer here one of the things we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take uh, the absolute tap out value meaning at some point when your resistance gets too low uh, it will stop firing uh, the wave the the high low of the waveform is just not usable so we tack a resistor on here that represents the uh, least amount of resistance we can have and still make the device work uh, that way we're not um, taking this potentiometer down below the uh, minimum requirement to still make the device work so that's just kind of a like a, a base um, that resistor tacked on the end there is a base lowest possible level when the potentiometer is just essentially letting through current um, so that's why that's tacked on there and with that on there we can dial around and we can try to see what we like as far as uh, flash rates and we could just solder this to the board and then we would have an adjustable speed piercer two power supply and, and ultimately if this was a project I was doing uh, for anything other than demonstration I'd probably do that um, however I'm gonna just keep this the way it is with the pins so that I continue to can continue to use it for similar projects so I'm gonna get this dialed in to where I like it um, and make sure that I am completely comfortable dialing it up and down um, and then the next step in this particular demonstration is going to be putting this one side by side with a factory one and seeing just how close I can dial uh, the dial towards the factory spec speed just by eye, which should prove to be extremely disorienting and maybe a little bit more difficult than you would think. Um, theoretically, if I get that correct, the measured resistance on the resistor and the potentiometer through it after I have it dialed in should be around 19K, um, give or take because of tolerances and connections, etc. So I'm going to see if I can do that here. If I can dial my modded uh, version right to factory spec with it just next to it. And I'm going to go up and down a little bit here, back and forth. Uh, but I'm going to try to get it dialed in in the end here and see just how close I'm able to get. And then you know, what I would do normally if this was a project is I would solder this onto the board and we'd have a variable rate uh, Piercer 2 supply. But in this case, what I'm going to do is after I check and see that I've gotten it, which in the end I did get it to be like 18K, I think. It's pretty close. Uh, I'm just going to leave this piercer power supply with the pin sticking up so that I can keep doing stuff like this. I like having one that I can just connect in and uh, change the value and change the speed. So um, thanks for watching this project. I, I think it was fun for me. I hope uh, it was informative and at least interesting for you and have a great day.